Our generation often talks about how important it is to be an agent of change, to be a source of light. My new high school, in a small, predominantly white town. I quickly noticed that I was the only person of color. I pleaded with my mom to straighten my coarse hair so that I could finally fit in. In class, a boy blurted, Ching Chong. Everyone laughed. Being half Korean, I was really hurt. I brought Indian food to school. These stares and questions did eventually make me stop eating my food. My schools decided to host a soul food fest to honor Black History Month. They served fried chicken, watermelon, grains, banana pudding, and Kool-Aid, all stereotypical Black people food. My father started taking me to rallies so that I could engage in civic discourse. A police officer said he had been told my father had a firearm on him. This was a lie. I knew the hatred behind the lie could be fatal. Have you seen the tweets yet? My friend rushed to ask me. Some read violent statements telling a girl to kill herself. Others targeted LGBTQ students, calling them slurs. We were spat on, told we were pigs. Kids follow what their parents say, and if their parents choose to hate, that hate will spread. I saw a mother whisper in this little girl's ear, and the girl shouted, You're laughable, you gays! A small girl being coaxed by her family. No one is born hating anyone. Growing up as a Jewish child, I was educated on the Holocaust. In my global studies class, we did not read any first-hand accounts or engage in serious discussion. I felt like my ancestors' history was being erased. The world we live in has had its dark moments. In darkness, we can't see where we are going or what we are doing. I was sitting in the back seat of my mom's smoke-filled car when the police knocked on the window. My mom was higher than I had ever seen her. Everyone saw my mom get arrested. This is when the bullying started. Have you ever had a friend who was a bully, but stayed friends with them so you wouldn't get bullied too? Saying hurtful things about people is wrong, and it happens more often than it should. One day, I had enough. I told her, if you keep being a bully to other people, I don't want to be your friend anymore. When I stand up for someone else, there's two of us. We stand together. I want to be able to shine a light on this bias against Asian Americans to help make a change. I am determined to make a change. We should use our talents in writing, poetry, art, film, or performing to shed light on the challenges people face daily. Now that I've experienced hate and found my voice, it's my responsibility to shine the light of my advocacy. By shining a light, I hope to not only honor the memories of Holocaust victims, but also to help ensure protection for future generations. By shining a light on my situation and being a light for someone in a similar situation, I can help destigmatize addiction. When people feel seen and heard, they are mentally healthier. It's okay to be different. It's what makes us special. It's okay to love who you do, to be who you are. Your culture shouldn't be something that shames you. It should be something you display and are proud of. Emailing my principal was the first time I stepped out of my comfort zone and said something about the ignorant racism in the school. And I am glad I did it because now my principal is very active in learning more. Now we have a committee to prevent further injustices. Being a source of light is difficult, but creating lasting change is more like starting a fire with damp wood. It may not light the first time, but if you have courage, if you are persistent, if you connect with others to find common ground, and if you continue to advocate for change, it may just catch and provide you with light and warmth in the darkest of nights. Together, we can stop the hate and shine our light for good.